Now let's talk about the history of Ghostbusters 3, the non-existent film, and see where it went wrong and uh, just how it descended into garbage. So to begin with, we should talk about Ghostbusters 2. Lots of people were unhappy with that one and say that's the reason there were no other sequels, uh, which is pretty a definitive thing to say, you know? Uh, I was nine years old when I saw in the theater, and to me, you know, being completely uh, just pure as a kid, uh, I thought it was amazing. And uh, then over the years, after hearing nothing but bad things about it, I've been conditioned to write that one off, to dismiss it. And then one day, I finally watched it again as an adult, and it's way better than everyone makes it out to be. It's not as good as the first one. Uh, the first one set the bar really high. Just because it's not as good, does that mean it's bad? The second one is very similar to the original. It's in tune. It's not like they took it and made something completely different. If anything, that's my criticism that they played it safe. Lots of the same chemistry is there. There's lots of funny quotable lines. Uh, Bill Murray, he's hilarious as always, even though he's always looked down on that film. Uh, if he had any reluctance at the time, it actually helped his performance as the master of pessimism and sarcasm. Anyway, the point is, I would have been happy to see a third Ghostbusters, but I'm glad they didn't keep making them and beat the franchise into the ground. We didn't need a third movie right away, but after a while, it would have made a great nostalgic comeback. The passage of time was good for it. Even Bill Murray once said during a Q&A session, the wounds of Ghostbusters 2 have healed. By the 2000s, I think the time was ripe for it. That's also when I first became aware of a script that was floating around the internet called Ghostbusters Hellbent, which was supposedly the script that Dan Aykroyd wrote for the third movie. This is the one where the Ghostbusters go into an alternate hell version of Manhattan, Manhelton or whatever. Uh, I read it at the time, and uh, that was a long time ago, and from what I remember, it wasn't great but the dialogue was very suitable to the Ghostbuster characters. When I read it, I could hear all their voices in my head, but it doesn't matter because the film was never made. By the mid-2000s, it started to become clear that Bill Murray didn't want to be in it. In November 2005, Harold Ramis was interviewed by In Focus magazine. He said Ben Stiller would be his first choice as a new Ghostbuster, but I think many of us would agree we wanted the original cast. In February 2007, Dan Aykroyd was interviewed on an FM radio station, CSIN 103.9. He said the movie was going to be animated, all CG. The reason being, with all the special effects, the script would have been too expensive to make into live action, and that Bill Murray was more willing to do a voice. This obviously never happened, but the new Ghostbusters video game was in the early tech demo phase at the time. The game came to full fruition, and it featured the voices of all the original Ghostbusters. I wonder if Aykroyd was talking about that. In September 2008, Ramis told the Chicago Tribune that a new script was being written by Gene Stupinski and Lee Eisenberg, and that it would focus on new, younger Ghostbusters with the old Ghostbusters as mentors. That same month, Bill Murray made a surprise appearance at a screening of the City of Ember at Fantastic Fest and answered questions from the audience. Somebody asked him the dreaded Ghostbusters 3 question, and this is when he replied, the wounds from Ghostbusters 2 have healed. Then he gave the most optimistic words he's ever spoken about appearing in a third movie. He mentioned the screenwriters and said that it could work. Also, he said the characters were fun, and with the video game, it was fun to do it again. He didn't specifically say yes, but it was far from a no. In October 2008, the rumors built up that Seth Rogen would be starring in it, but even he was skeptical and said it didn't sound like a good idea. Imagine if Ghostbusters was made into a pot-smoking comedy. That's not what Ghostbusters is about. In December 2008, Sigourney Weaver was interviewed for an MTV article. She seemed open to it, but really wanted to see the character Oscar, Dana Barrett's son, have a larger role as a possible Ghostbuster. In January 2009, footage surfaced of what people were saying was Ghostbusters 3 being filmed in New York City. The footage showed a CG work in progress of a Transformer-like junk heap in the shape of Stay Puff walking through the city, but it turned out it was just a car commercial. 
Meanwhile, Dan Aykroyd, on too many occasions to count, kept saying the movie would start filming soon. He was always the voice of optimism and confidence, but every time he would give a start date, his prediction would always be wrong. In June 2009, the video game was released and was a success. It was a love letter to Ghostbusters fans. The voices and the storyline made it feel just like you were playing the third movie. This caused a lot of false excitement that the real movie was on the way. But looking back, I guess we actually did get a third Ghostbusters movie but it was in the form of a video game. Just watch the cutscenes, and you're watching Ghostbusters 3. I just wish I knew it at the time to savor it. In December 2009, Harold Ramis was interviewed by Heave and said that the movie was going to shoot in summer of 2010 and release in 2011. Also that month, Sigourney Weaver said that the character Peter Venkman would be killed off and Bill Murray would be appearing as a ghost. This is based on an older rumor, so old that I can't remember where it started. Basically, sometime in the mid to late 2000s, Murray said he would be in it if they made him a ghost. That is an idea I always liked. It's a clever way to work him in. I mean, he voiced Garfield twice, and I don't think it compromises the creative potential in any way. Imagine Venkman as a ghost form going around making sarcastic comments. It could be great. In January 2010, Ivan Reitman said he would be back to direct. Things kept getting more and more real. But in March 2010, Murray told David Letterman that it's all just crazy talk and that all the hype for the movie was his nightmare. In August 2010, he told GQ that it's a bunch of crock and pointed out the screenwriters Stupinski and Eisenberg, who had also written Year One, saying that he was told by friends that Year One was one of the worst things they had ever seen. And yes, I've seen Year One. It was bad, but Year One is not a Ghostbusters movie. In October 2010, Dan Aykroyd told Vanity Fair that the script is excellent and they wrote Bill the role of a lifetime. In February 2011, Bill Murray told Howard Stern that he never read the script. At this point, it was pretty clear that he didn't want to do it. I don't understand why they couldn't just drop the project or recast him. Of course, I wouldn't want to see the movie without Peter Venkman, or even worse, with somebody else playing his part. But... It could have been done. If they got everybody else except Murray, I think it could have still been possible. Unfortunate, but still possible. In August 2011, Aykroyd spoke on Dennis Miller's radio show and for the first time seemed to imply that the movie would move ahead with or without Bill Murray. But then, in February 2012, Aykroyd contradicted it and told Empire that there's more work to do on the script and denied a rumor that Murray shredded the script and mailed it back to him. At this point, it reached comedic levels. I think they should have instead made a movie about trying to make the movie. Imagine Dan Aykroyd chasing Bill Murray while he's on a golf course or something and trying to catch him in a bag to drag him to the movie set. That also seems more in tune with something Murray would have liked to do. He's great at playing himself, being bitter and resistant, and it seems like he's found some kind of humor in teasing us about Ghostbusters 3. He had a cameo in Zombieland and as soon as he appears, the whole movie hits the brakes and turns into a loving Ghostbusters parody with him at the center of it. At the 2010 Scream Awards, he appeared in full Ghostbusters costume for no apparent reason. In June 2012, Murray made another appearance on Letterman and seemed more open to the idea. Only a month later, it's announced that the script is being rewritten again, this time by a new writer, Ethan Cohen. In August 2012, Aykroyd told Metro that they're moving ahead without Murray and that he's confident they'll be in production the following year. Same old stuff. In September 2012, Ivan Reitman backed away, who can blame him, and he told Collider it should be remade instead. What a joke. Guess we're not laughing anymore. And I can't forget about Rick Moranis. Many say that he's retired, though he says that's not true. He's just selective about his roles. But anyway, he was interviewed by Hebe in June 2013 and said an associate of Aykroyd asked him about returning to the franchise but had no more information for him. Moranis said in these exact words, 
I don't say no to anything until everything is presented to me. What is it? Is it happening? Is there a script? What's the part? Who else is in it? Where is it? How long is it going to take? You know, I need a little bit more information. Sounds like they didn't get too far. The man was open to the idea and they couldn't even get him a script. Well, when it came to the reboot, he turned that down, telling The Hollywood Reporter in October 2015, it makes no sense to me. And I agree. As the years went on, all the Ghostbusters 3 talk got too exhausting to follow anymore. It was basically a back and forth between Aykroyd and Murray, and it never made sense to me what the holdup was. Either move ahead without him, or kill the project. Shit or get off the pot. The end came in February 2014, when Harold Ramis passed away. It was a very sad time, and as far as Ghostbusters 3 is concerned, it's impossible without him. And then all of a sudden, something actually starts happening. This is when the unnecessary reboot began gaining momentum, and then who would have thought? Bill Murray is in it! <laughs> he has a cameo, supposedly. When you stop and think about it, it's incredible how many movie franchises have made it to number three. Home Alone 3, Free Willy 3, Problem Child 3, the list goes on and on. How can a sequel to one of the highest grossing comedies, one of the most beloved franchises in existence, not get a sequel? The latest Star Wars proved that with enough money and demand, you can get a reluctant actor back. It is possible. Some may say it was for the best, that it wouldn't have turned out to be a good movie anyway. I think that's a pessimistic way of thinking. Creativity exists. I don't know if we'll ever get a chance to read any of these dead scripts to Ghostbusters 3, uh, not since the Hellbent version. Maybe they were good or not. Either way, I think a good Ghostbusters sequel could have been written even without the character of Peter Venkman. It would have been a compromise, but it could have worked. This is a major example of a studio sitting on a property and not knowing what to do with it. They let it build up, it got constipated, and now they took an X-Lax and are shitting out the nastiest fucking shit you could ever take. My hopes for a new Ghostbusters sequel kept getting compromised more and more until now, I don't want it anymore. If I were to go see this movie, I would be a sucker. Michael Bay is going to keep making shitty Transformers movies that everybody hates till the end of time, and you know why? because they make billions of dollars. Every time you go see it, they make another. So, stop seeing it.